With the first pick in the 2018 NBA Draft, the Phoenix Suns select DeAndre Ayton from Nassau, Bahamas, and the University of Arizona. Now it's come full circle. Uh, what did you have to do to make it into this moment? I mean, really to try to prove people wrong and, you know, just stick to what I do. Um, just uh, work on my craft every day, take pride in it, and, you know, represent my country the best way I can. DeAndre, for people that aren't familiar with you and your game, can you just kind of sum up what you bring to both sides of the floor and to the team in general? Dominance. I bring dominance. My name is Dominating. When you see the level of tension that exists, when you see the lack of effort he put forth, when you saw the extra that they had to put in just to get him to be on board, when you saw how he got schooled by Nikola Jokic. Curling, here he comes. Left hand, no. Jokic, couple of tries, misses, gets it back, missed again. Because if DeAndre Ayton is playing up to snuff, you might have lost, but you don't get annihilated where you're down 30 in a game seven. I'm going to say it one last time. DeAndre Ayton, of course, Monty Williams, his job. In 2018, DeAndre Ayton was the number one pick, seen as the next great big man in the league, and was on his way to have a great NBA career. Flash forward six years later, and DeAndre Ayton is the laughing stock of the NBA and is seen as nothing but a bust. This was the same man getting compared to Shaquille O'Neal, but now even Shaq is laughing at him. Things aren't exactly going the way we all thought. In 2017, the University of Arizona basketball team would bring in a brand new center from Hillcrest Academy, which is located in Arizona. DeAndre Ayton, a 7 foot 1, 250 pound big man who had potential to be great, was about to join this team. His first few games playing for U of A only proved this exact point. Game after game, we started to realize that Ayton was on his way to being the next lottery pick. Watching his game, you could notice a few things. He was a great post player, he could out rebound just about anybody on the court, and his intensity made other opponents fear him. And it wasn't just Ayton who was having a good season. The team as a whole was playing pretty well and ended the season as the 12th ranked best team in the country. Going into March Madness, a lot of people thought they could do some damage, but first they had the Pac-12 tournament. Depending on how they did in this tournament, their seeding could look either a lot better or a lot worse. They handled business versus Colorado, they had a battle with UCLA, and now they were matched up with USC for the Pac-12 title. In the end, Aiton would end up with 32 points and 18 rebounds and would also be awarded with the Pac-12 tournament's most outstanding player. As much of an accomplishment as it was for Aiton and his team, it was now time for the most important part of the season, March Madness. March Madness can make or break a player's reputation going into the NBA. U of A would be the 4 seed playing against 13 seed Buffalo, and surely they should be able to handle this team. Kicks it to Harris. Three-pointer is good! Nick Perkins working on Ristich. Gets a foul! Gets the bucket! And one for Perkins! Harris trying to get by Aiden. Step back. Oh! In your face! 21-point win! Round one. They got upset in round one, and they didn't just lose. They got a grade A ass whooping. Aiton would finish the game with 14 points and 13 rebounds, but shot a piss boy 16 of 13 from the field. For context, this is someone who shot 61% from the field that year, and in the biggest game of the year, he shot 46%. In the end, Villanova would be crowned the champions, and wait, is that Will still true? As bad as of a performance he had, it really didn't matter because he's projected to go number one in the 2018 NBA draft. Now, I need you to understand something. This was one of the most loaded draft classes we had seen in quite a while. Trey Young from Oklahoma, Jaron Jackson Jr. from Michigan State, Jalen Brunson and Mikel Bridges from Nova, Shea from Kentucky, and also there was this kid from Sylvania that definitely won't be relevant later on in this video. So it's safe to say this was one of the best draft classes we had seen in a while. And in this draft, the number one pick would go to the Phoenix Suns, who were the worst team in the NBA that year. Most analysts were saying the smart move was to take 8-1, and then one. and I mean, it was almost perfect. Too perfect. Arizona kid who played at an Arizona college going to an Arizona team. Also, Phoenix lacked a great big man, and Aiden was getting compared to Shaq. And you know who Shaq's duo was? Well, it was Kobe Bryant. And guess who was getting comparisons to Kobe Bryant? Devin fucking Booker. Aiden was the perfect pick that you had to take. Sure, there were some other great players in that class, but Aiden made sense. The only other person who even came close was Luka Doncic, yet nobody took him serious compared to Aiden because he was an overseas player. Nowadays, it doesn't really matter where you come from. If you can ball, you 
can ball. But back in 2018, NBA media was filled with xenophobia on a level that was unprecedented. Flash forward to the draft and everything went exactly as planned. Now Phoenix has their guy and Aiden can have a great career. In his rookie season, he would average about 16 points and 10 rebounds. Aiden was a double-double monster in college and so far this was translating into the NBA. The Suns weren't that good so people didn't pay attention, but his rookie year you could say was a success. His second year, however, would be very, oh great, he just got busted for PEDs. Great job, DeAndre. When he came back, things actually got better. His stats bumped up a little bit, but also this was the bubble year. If you remember in the NBA bubble, the Suns actually got invited because technically, according to math, they had a chance to make the playoffs via the brand new play-in tournament. The Suns would proceed to go 8-0 and shock the world. Fortunately, they barely missed the playoffs, but there was hope in Phoenix. The following year, DeAndre Ayton had everything to prove, and so did the Suns. They had just gotten Chris Paul, and a lot of people thought this was going to be a very fun team. It would end the season as the second seed in the West, and now it was time for the postseason. Ayton would average about 16-11 in round one versus the Lakers, then 14-10 and versus the Nuggets. Yes, there was a time period where people thought DeAndre Ayton was better than Nikola Jokic. After sweeping the Nuggets, the Suns made the Western Conference Finals where they'd be facing against the Los Angeles Clippers. Ayton would have a great series, averaging about 18-4 and almost two blocks a game, but this is what you probably remember from that series. Crowd are looking, throws it, alley, oh! The Suns would advance to the finals, but tragically, they would lose to the Bucks in six games. Aiden had a solid series, but it really didn't matter in the end because Giannis was just too dominant. In 2021, he had a good season, but now something was coming up. Aiden would be eligible for a four-year, $132 million contract by the Suns. There was a mixed reaction around the league whether or not the Suns should offer it to him, but during the offseason, he would eventually sign it. This would come to become the biggest mistake the Suns could have made, and after this contract was signed, everything would change. Sure, he had an 18-10 and 10 year, but if you watch the games, you could tell something was up. He lacked his intensity and started to become a liability on the offensive side. And in the playoffs, it was shown to the world that he was a joke. When asked about it, he got defensive, even though everyone could tell what was going on. At the end of his son's tenure, we learned a few things. Aiton was statistically a good center, but that was really about it. For the number one pick, he was performing below expectations. Luka Doncic was an MVP candidate and Aiton couldn't even crack 20 points per game. During the offseason, it became very apparent that Aiton was going to get traded. When Frank Vogel was brought onto the team, he said he wanted to to work with Aiden because he believed in him. However, in a three-team trade, Aiden would be flipped to Portland, and in my eyes, this was a good move. Aiden gets a fresh start, and he gets to be on a team with no expectations. Surely, he's going to have a career year on a rebuilding team, but at the time recording this video, Aiden is having the worst season of his career. But how is that? Well, we might have the answers. According to a report from a team source, it said that Aiden has been tardy, throwing tantrums, and showing resemblance to Hassan Whiteside, and no, not because of his play. This is the same guy who said he was a max player and had nothing to prove. Aiden had a potential to be a great player, but somewhere down the line, he stopped caring about the game and now the bust narrative fits him perfectly. As much money as he has, his work ethic is piss poor and he's a spoiled brat who only made the NBA because of his height. Maybe that sounds harsh, but this is coming from the same guy who said getting another contract was success in the NBA. You know, once you get to that second contract, once you achieve all your, your accol individual accolades and you know, being a great teammate and you know, win a lot of games, um, that's when the second contract comes in and I think that's when you really legit made all your, legit, legitly made all your money and you know, you're really set for life. 